And it's not only integrated in open source applications or commercial applications, it's really used, I mean, in the real life, you know. Uh, there are some, some big projects, uh, like uh, one um, that I mentioned here, uh, Scott Hickey is going to speak about this project uh, in the afternoon, right? Okay, right, just after uh, the keynotes, after lunch, probably. Before. Before lunch, okay. So it's a pretty big um, application, a mission critical application uh, for a Fortune 500 uh, insurance company in the US. And um, they've got a, a risk calculation engine uh, whose business rules are fully written in Ruby. So you've got this big application uh, where domain experts, actuaries, uh, are coding in Groovy to express the business rules in this application. There's um, almost 50,000 lines of Groovy code, half test code, half business code, and uh, I think it's a quite nice success story of Groovy uh, usage in the, in the real life. You'll learn more in the Scott's session. Uh, I wanted to list a few other um, use cases. Um, I got a, a friend, a former colleague, who recently told me that he had used Groovy um, as a developer tool. Um, they deployed uh, an application for the French Ministry of Justice. Um, it didn't contain a single line of Groovy code in the production application, but they used Groovy just as a developer tool. They had designed a nice UML model of, you know, uh, judges, lawyers, um, courts, trials, and such, in UML. They exported that in XML, <coughs> XML, in fact. And they, through Groovy templates, um, parsing this XML stuff through our great XML support in Groovy, they created the skeleton of a stretch <coughs> Sorry, Struts application. <laughs> <coughs> oh, it always hurts when I mention this, this word. I know, I don't know why, but well, you know, that's the way it is. Uh, I'm allergic, probably. Don't know. And um, you know, you can use Groovy in, in many areas, in many ways, uh, just as a unit test tool, as a developer tool, or with production code, business rules written in Groovy. Um, other examples, uh, I'm in contact with, um, there's um, a governmental um, agency um, uh, about, you know, atomic risk prevention. They are doing some um, scientific uh, simulations. Um, they've got some pretty powerful uh, Java libraries for doing things like matrix, matrix calculations and such. Um, well, you know, when you do those kind of calculations uh, in Java, it's not very readable. So with a language like Ruby, which is pretty neat for writing you know, DSLs, domain-specific languages, um, they put a nice wrapper around those classes, and they've got a nice DSL, like you know, in MATLAB or you know, all those math applications. And they can do their calculations by writing some, some Ruby scripts. That's pretty neat. Well, I could list a few other use cases, uh, like the European Aer Aerospace Consortium, who's using um, both Groove and Rails for some um, grid uh, calculation as well, and many more. And probably some of you guys have got some nice use cases you can talk about as well. So, um, Groovy is used in open source projects, in uh, commercial um, applications, and uh, you know, in projects um, for big name companies. And speaking of big stuff, big player contributions. Let me speak about Oracle. Well, Oracle embeds Groovy in uh, three of their products: Oracle Data Integrator. Um, there, um, they've got a, a framework called ADF Business Components. Uh, for instance, you can write um, those validation rules in Groovy. So it's nicer to just write, you know, equal, uh, A equals equals B or things like that, rather than A dot equals, which doesn't read that well. 
uh, you can um, administer your OC4J container through JMX beans uh, by manipulating them as local Groovy beans, pogos, plain old Groovy objects uh, through JMX. And uh, we've got a nice support for JMX in, in, in Groovy. And uh, on that occasion, Oracle helped us improve the JMX support. They provided uh, us with, with some patches to improve our support for JMX. Um, You've got the impression of users using, you know, normal objects, although they are remote stuff in a, in a container. There's, there's also um, IBM and CERN. IBM recently um, made some noise uh, with their Project Zero um, web framework. Not sure it's as, as good as Grails, of course, but that's another story. And um, they are using Ruby as a blue language for writing you know, all those um, web artifacts. And um, uh, since um, they've got some tooling support in Eclipse and uh, RAD, RAD6, they are also helping um, the Groovy Eclipse team uh, to improve the plugin. Uh, they are submitting patches, so it's a nice contribution. And um, let me say a few words about CERN as well because they've been pretty kind uh, with us, for instance, for organizing our yearly Groovy developer conferences. So back um, on Monday and Tuesday, we were at CERN's uh, customer briefing center. We had a, a nice room, some refreshments, and so on, thanks to, thanks to CERN. And they also, well, we've got a, a CERN machine, pretty big machine that we can use for performance testing, especially you know those high concurrency low testing scenarios that we were keen on, just to, to make sure that Ruby behaves well on highly concurrent uh, scenarios. Uh, one last big name, JBoss, <coughs> a division of Red Hat, as they call themselves. JBoss team provides some nice Ruby support. You can write you know, your SIM components, your JP entities, your session beans, and other uh, utility classes and so on in, in Groovy. And uh, you can, you know, make some modifications and uh, just hit F5 and refresh your brother and the modifications are taken into account, a bit like in Grails. And um, they, in fact, they use uh, Groovy 1.1 already because uh, we've had it, we've added, um, Java 5 features in Ruby 1.1. So um, while integrating Ruby in JBoss Seam, they helped us iron out uh, all, all the bugs we had in our implementation of annotations and generics. So thanks a lot, JBoss. Uh, JetBrains, um, they've, uh, they've been working hard on a awesome Groovy and Grails plugin for IntelliJ IDEA. If you haven't used it already, um, you should really try it. Um, you know, there's, there are all these usual features you see in IDEAs like syntax highlighting and such, uh, executing scripts, unit tests, or even step debugging in your Groovy code. And uh, more than that, there's code completion through static type information as well as through type inference. And beyond that, there's also refactoring. So you can do shift F6 and yeah, rename that variable and it's renamed. Even if you make Groovy in Java, it's renamed everywhere. So it's quite neat. And much more, there's um, a guy from JetBrains, Eugene was going to speak about the, the integration they did, he's just there. But, uh, so I invite you to, to have a look at the plugin and go to Hugin's session. It should be pretty interesting if you want to know what you can do with this plugin exactly. Um, 